just come my way Wherever I go, hard luck is there to stay Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always a come my way For today's Grim Adventure, we find ourselves in Los Angeles, California, where today we're going to be telling the story of the life and death of the legendary, the funny, Phil Hartman. And the best place to begin any story is the beginning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm just a caveman. I fell in some ice and later got thawed out by some of your scientists. Your world frightens and confuses me. Fire back! Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You may remember me from such nature films as Earwigs, Ooh! And Man vs. Nature, The Road to Victory. Now when it comes to Phil Hartman, everybody remembers him because of the characters that he played whether it was The Simpsons or Saturday Night Live or his many impressions that he did. He was like the king of impressions. He could change his face and his voice without any makeup and he was constantly creating new things. Well, in the early 70s, the beginning of Phil Hartman here in Los Angeles, he was a graphic designer that was designing album covers, if I remember correctly. And one night in 1975, Phil Hartman came to this building to watch the improv comedy troupe known as the Groundlings. And for whatever reason, he felt the desire to jump on stage and act with them. And he was amazing. I dropped out of uh, college in my senior year to take a job in an ad agency. And then a few years later, I started my own design studio as an illustrator, designer, and I was designing album covers for about 10 years. I've designed 40 album covers for groups like Poco and America and did design work for Crosby, Stills and Nash and Stephen Stills. And I was doing that at the time that I joined the Groundlings in 75 mm -hmm. because I, I still had all these multiple personalities in right. me, but I was spending 12 hours a day at a drawing board. Yeah, you know, now, this video is not on the history of the Groundlings, although I really think that it deserves its own video because the amount of talent that came from this place, that still comes from this place, is astounding. But as for Phil Hartman, when he was here, Paul Rubens was also here. They were classmates, if you will, or they were acting friends, if you will. And both of them, Paul Rubens and Phil Hartman, created the character Pee Wee Herman. Another interesting piece of information about the Groundlings that I didn't know until I started doing research for this video is that Cassandra Peterson technically got her start here. She's an alumni. Her character, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, got her start here. You see, back whenever she was here, the character that she created was a valley girl. And that morphed and became and grew into what we know as Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. I was in the Groundlings, uh, Groundlings Improv Group in LA. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but I think most of the cast of Saturday Night Live for the last hundred years have been, you know, stocked with Groundlings. Um, but I was in the Groundlings with the late Phil Hartman and Paul Rubens, who of course is Pee Wee. And uh, we didn't have those characters back then though. They hadn't been invented yet. But the director really liked the comedy that I was doing, which was kind of, I had a character that was kind of a dorky valley girl actress from you know, the valley going on auditions. And he really liked the character. So when he brought me in, he said, do that character. They chose me out of all the people who were auditioning and then he said, I still want you to do that character but come up with a spooky looking outfit. That's kind of cool. But when it comes to Phil Hartman, I have a favorite character and that is Captain Carl from the Pee Wee Herman show. Don't you do it here? You're supposed to be watching the ship, you crazy flying lizard! Get out of here! Oh, <laughs> Captain Carl, did you remember to wash your hands? No! <laughs> Find your Pee Wee Captain Carl always remembers to wash his hands. Oh, a sailor travels to many lands. Any place he pleases. And he always remembers to wash his hands so he don't get no diseases. <laughs> After the Groundlings, the Pee Wee Herman show was introduced to the world via an HBO special where Phil Hartman had a 
a reoccurring character that went by the name of Captain Carl, one of my all-time favorite characters from a children's TV show. I guess you can call it that. To this day, I still find myself saying one of his, my favorite lines of his, I got a date with a mackerel peewee. I gotta go, Pee. Yeah, but don't you want to just wait around? I got an important fishing engagement, Pee Wee. Yeah, but you can just say hi to Mrs. Lovett. Got a date girl. with the mackerel, Pee Wee. Yeah, really wish I could stick around. around. Now, I feel like we're jumping around quite a bit, especially with talking about Phil Hartman's death right now. When in a little bit, we're going to talk more in depth about it. But Phil Hartman died May 28th, 1998. And even though you can actually go to a cemetery and, and there's a headstone, Phil and his wife, Man, I hate saying that. Uh, they were cremated and their ashes were scattered. But here at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, you can actually visit a piece of Phil Hartman history. Now, right over here, we've done a video on this before, is the ashes, the final resting place of Jombie the Genie from Pee Wee's Playhouse. And his name is John Paragon. And it's right here. There's some pictures on both sides. Wish? Did somebody say wish? Mecca lecca hi, mecca hiney ho. Mecca lecca hi, mecca ho ho ho. The wish is granted, long live Jambi. I know somebody's going to be watching this video and they're going to say to themselves, wait a second, Grim, you didn't mention this movie or this TV show or this role or something else that Phil Hartman is famous for. I know, his, his resume is so, so big. This is just some of the stuff that we know him mostly from. Now, from here, we have to leave Hollywood proper and head up to Encino, where Phil Hartman was living and where he died. We begin with a murder investigation that has stunned the entertainment world. Phil Hartman, who gained fame on Saturday Night Live, was found shot dead in his home, apparently killed by his wife, who then committed suicide. ABC's Carla Wool has more from Los Angeles. Now, wait a second. Strike that and reverse it. Before we get too deep into what happened, let's talk more about Phil and his wife, Bryn. Now, Bryn was Phil Hartman's third wife, and they had two kids, and they had a very troubled marriage. In fact, after everything was all said and done, people who were close to both of them, including family, came out and said just how troubled the marriage was. Bryn had a pretty serious drug addiction problem that she was trying to kick for quite some time. And that mixed with a short temper caused her and Phil to fight. I mean, everybody knew that they were fighting. Yet, every time they were together, they were inseparable. Now here's the thing. Even though it was obviously a toxic relationship and the couple fought all the time, surprisingly, Phil and Bryn still stayed together. And from everything that I read, Phil wasn't a very confrontational kind of person. So whenever they fought, his go-to, his haven, if you will, was to just go to bed. And then when he woke up the next morning, everything would be fine. But the thing was, it kept happening over and over and over again. Even through all the fighting, the Hartmans were still a couple. And just like any couple out there, they had their favorite places that they would like to go together. And one of them was a restaurant about two blocks from their house, known as Buca de Beppo, which is this red building on the right-hand side. And this is where our story starts to come to an end. On the night of March 27, 1998, Bryn was sitting at the bar inside this Buca de Beppo with a friend, having a few drinks. It was kind of like a business meeting. But Phil wasn't with her. He was home, a couple blocks away. Afterwards, the restaurant staff said there was a little odd, but nothing alarming that Bryn was at the restaurant without Phil that night. I mean, usually they're in here together, but this time she was there with a friend. They did say that whenever she left, she did tell them that she would be back soon and next time with Phil. Now, I don't know if she drove home or if she walked, but she could have walked it if she wanted to, because two blocks down this road right here is where they lived. So two blocks down the street from Buca de Beppo is where you'll find the intersection of Encino and Embassy. And this giant, beautiful house 
It sits right in at the middle of your screen on the other side of that fence is where the Hartmans lived. And you can see the garage right there. So let's say Bryn drove home. She would have parked the car probably in that garage. And this is where it kind of gets a little abrupt. A lot of people theorize, and I'm guessing that when she was home, when she got here, her and her husband, Phil, got into another one of their fights. And Phil decided to go to bed like he always does. And sometime before three o'clock in the morning, Bryn shoots and kills, murders her husband. Shoots him three times, one in the head and twice in the chest while he's sleeping in bed. It's crazy to think that that happened in a place that's so beautiful like this. But it gets crazier. So after this, probably, I, well, there were booze and drugs in her system. But after this, she decides to get in the car and drive to a friend's house. And this always bothers me even more because there are two kids, a nine-year-old and a six-year-old were actually in the house at the time of the murder. One of the kids, the oldest, um, the son, said he heard the gunshots, not knowing what they were. So Bryn leaves her kids after murdering her husband in the house and goes to a friend's house. Well, she calls him first and says, you know, I, I'm having a hard time. And her friend tells him, tells her to go to sleep, to just kind of like, you know, shake it off. She didn't tell him that what she did. So he says for her to go to bed and she can't. So what she does, she gets in her car and she drives over to her friend's house. And it is then that she tells her friend that I shot and I killed my husband, Phil's dead. And he didn't believe her. Eventually, he follows her back to the house and they discover Phil's body in the back bedroom in the back side of the house. Immediately after seeing Bryn was telling the truth, he calls 911 and tells them what happened and they come over here, they rush over here. And in the process of carrying the children out of the house, Bryn locks herself in the bedroom, sits next to her dead husband, calls her sister, and then shoots herself. We begin with a murder investigation that has stunned the entertainment world. Phil Hartman, who gained fame on Saturday Night Live, was found shot dead in his home, apparently killed by his wife, who then committed suicide. ABC's Carla Wool has more from Los Angeles. At 6.20 this morning, residents of this upscale Encino neighborhood called police to report gunshots coming from the Hartman's gated estate. Officers arrived to find a nine-year-old boy and a six-year-old girl by the front door, both obviously upset. As they were taking the children out of the house, officers heard a gunshot in the master bedroom. There they discovered comedian Phil Hartman dead. Authorities say it appears his wife Bryn shot him, then turned the gun on herself. Mr. Hartman had been dead for a while. He did not die um, at the same time that uh, Mrs. Hartman apparently killed herself. Distraught neighbors and friends of the couple say they had marital problems. One woman said she had feared that this would happen. We don't have any information concerning that topic at this time. We're continuing. Robbie Homicide will conduct a very thorough investigation. They will talk to the neighbors. They will talk to all witnesses and try and, and find that out. Hartman made his living making people laugh. He got his first big break on Saturday Night Live. For eight years, he took on characters like President Clinton. And the fact is that one person and one person only bears the full responsibility for this affair. My wife, Hillary Rodham. Hartman was currently starring on the NBC sitcom News Radio. He played a Ted Baxter-ish anchorman. Police are not confirming it, but friends say it was the Hartman's children taken from the house. They are now in protective custody and are being questioned by police. Carla Wohl, ABC News, Encino. I just can't get over how beautiful and peaceful it is back here. I mean, we are right off of Ventura Boulevard and it's gorgeous. I mean, you can hear the birds. It's crazy to think that something like that can happen. 
I mean, but it does. And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time telling the story of the life and death of comedian Phil Hartman. Until next time, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. His daddy stays. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 